So I've been on this journey. And on this journey, I became very involved at the Ignatian Center. And God really began to do some moving in my heart, drawing me to himself. And then I ended up at St. Monica's, where I feel totally at home. I've never felt more at home at a church ever than I feel here. I couldn't stop it. I didn't plan it. I just had to quit fighting it. So in my journey, I became so passionate about this that I decided to go to Wales this fall. In Wales is a Jesuit uh, retreat house called St. Binos, St. Binos Jesuit Retreat House, and do the full 36-day Ignatian exercises. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's very rigorous. You go through the whole life of Christ, and I, we were praying about seven and a half hours a day, and there's 30 days of total silence. So I thought, wow, 30 days of total silence? I'd done eight before, and that was something. So I thought, well, <clears throat> in order to prepare my body and my whole being, I'm going to walk at least 100 miles. I'm going to do a pilgrimage on my own first before I start the 30 days of silence. Okay, so my plan was to fly to Dublin and take a ferry from Dublin to Wales and then walk from the very furthest outside western tip of Wales is called Holy Island. And it's called Holy Island because the early Celtic Christians had a lot going on there. So I thought, I'm going to go there, stay for a few days in that place walk the circumference of the island, then I'm going to walk off and around. The next island is called Anglesey Island, and then I'm going to walk off Anglesey Island onto the mainland and walk all the way almost to England, uh, to where the monastery was, just, just uh, south of, of what's called Real. So I got to Dublin at 5.30 in the morning. My ferry left at 8.00. It was an hour, and a, uh, an hour and a little bit to get from the airport to the ferry. Just before I left, I went down to the bank and I got a 50-pound note for the taxi to get me to the ferry. When I came home, my wife said, wow, I've never seen one of those before. Let me take a picture. And I said, sure. So she took it into the bedroom and took some pictures. And anyway, the next day we went to the airport and I said goodbye. And I landed 5.30 in the morning, never been to Europe before. I land in Dublin, it's pitch black, it's foggy, and you have to walk quite a long ways from the airport down all these levels to get to where the taxis are. So by the time I got my bag, time is ju 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 and my ticket is only good for the 8.30 ferry. And uh, so I get my bag and I walk down all these levels and uh, I get to where the taxis are and I say, um, how much uh, to get to the ferry? And the guy says, uh, it'd be about 50 bob, you know, 50 pounds. And I was like, okay, 50 pounds, perfect. I, I never got it back from Cindy. It's pitch black in the middle of the morning. I'm in a strange place I never was before. I, the guy, I said, what do I do? He goes, well, maybe you could walk back up to the airport and find a cash. I, I said, if I do that, it'll take too much time. I'll miss my ferry. Uh, and I'll be sunk, I have no cash, and I won't be... <sighs> so I picked up my pack, <clears throat> and I put it on, and I started walking. I'm going, God, what am I going to do? I'm walking, and I hear, Brent. <laughs> and I'm thinking, either I'm so desperate that I'm hearing strange voices, or there's another guy in Ireland named Brent. Oh, I keep on. Brent! I look around. A cab pulls up and stops. A girl rolls down the window. She goes, I'm going downtown to the ferries. Do you need a ride? It was a girl I went to school at McGill with. Pardon? 
totally providential. So here I am, I get in the cab, and I'm like, wow, I can't believe it, Hillary, how are you, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I, I get to the ferry, and I, I go on the ferry, and I get to uh, Holy Island, and uh, I walk the island for a couple of days, and it's, it's nice because I don't, I'm staying in one place, and I can just make these little day trips. Finally, after that, on day three, day three or day four, uh, after that, I go, okay, it's time to walk off of, of Holy Island onto Anglesey. And so I get all my stuff packed up and I get everything. And I, it's the first day that I'm going to walk really a long, long way. And it, I had to walk on pavement for at least five miles to get off this island to the next island. So I'm walking and walking and walking for the first time. And all of a sudden, the bottom of my feet start to really burn. It's, it's a hot day and my feet are burning. And I'm going, okay. Today, I have to go at least eight more miles to get to the bed and breakfast that I have booked. I don't know if I can even walk another couple miles. What am I going to do? And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I heard, Brent. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't hear Brent. <laughs> I'm walking, and I'm walking. And then right where I had to turn left on this corner, there was this bench, and there was an older gentleman sitting there. I thought, oh man, I need to sit down to maybe take off my shoes, try to cool my feet down. I don't know what to do. I should have got good walking socks. And I sit down on this bench beside this guy, and uh, I go, what are you doing? Oh, waiting for a bus. I said, oh, okay. What are you doing? I said, oh, I'm going to try to walk to uh, wherever it was I was going that day. Whew, you're walking all the way there? I go, yeah, but I don't know if I'll make it. My, my feet are really burning. Oh, he says. He had just this little satchel. He reaches in. You'll be needing these then. And he pulled out two brand new pair of high-tech walking socks. <laughs> and I said, what? He goes, yeah, my son, my son, he's got some fancy sporting store. He gave me these today. I don't want these things. Here, you'll be needing them. And I put them on, and I walked. <laughs> The rest of the way, no problem. I have other stories I could tell you, but for the sake of time, I'll end there. All that to say, by the time I got to the retreat center, to St. Bino's, I was sure that I was where God wanted me to be. There was no doubt in my mind. I had experienced his providential, sacramental, tangible care for me in time and space. So part of the day was that we would go to Mass every single day at 5.30, and it was beautiful. Except as we got to this part in the Eucharistic prayer. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. And coming from my conditioning, I don't know exactly what yours is, and knowing the scriptures like I do, and all of the Old Testament scriptures about an angry God requiring a bloody sacrifice and blood to be spilled, and if we didn't spill the, sac the sacrificial blood, this angry God would destroy us. And I would sit in there, and I hear him having this beautiful experience, and, but when we'd get to this part of the Mass, I would say, what are we saying? That's what I want to talk about as we proceed.